So I just recently replaced the fuel pump in my wife's 1985 Corvette. And I had it laying here and I got to thinking about it after I replaced it. I said, well, why did it fail? I mean, it's still, you could hear it, it still pumped. It, it made a little pressure, but just very little, only like two or three PSI, just uh, barely enough to make the engine idle. So I took it apart and I've never taken one of these apart before, but it was kind of interesting how it's designed. And remember, this is, thing is 36 years old and it was still going. Of course, first thing that surprised me, we actually have brushes in here. And, you know, you think sometimes brushes, they spark and arc, but I guess if they're completely submerged in fuel, it's not an issue. But, and, and they do, the, the fuel is flowing all the way around this as it's running. So the brush life is great. So, I mean, after 36 years, that thing could go another 36 years. So, so it had to be something else. So I looked at the armature. It's still good. It's, it's, you can see how much wear it's taken over the years. But it was still spinning, developing some pressure. The magnets were fine. They weren't broke. So I kept going down the line, and I finally found the, the failure. The failure was this little part right here. A little piece of metal, a, a little splined connector I guess you call it so the way this worked is so you got little splines inside the armature here that fit on like that cr creating the drive for the fuel pump itself you know I've got I call this like you've got like a primary and secondary pump here the way I, I would call it so and you'd have this plate that sits on top I took a grinder and cut all the stuff apart and um, this little part would fit right in here and, and grab hold of the pump. Big fingers out of the way. You can see the spline right here. And you see how it's stripped out. So it was just, once it was in here, it was just spinning its wheels. Just spinning like that. This wasn't spinning like it's supposed to. If it was good, it'd be spinning up a, t up a storm like that creating pressure it wasn't doing that the only pressure we was developing was what little pressure the this little vein pump would would do i, I call it like a primary pump because that's the bottom of the, the fuel pump the, the the where it sucks in right here this by centrifugal force it's spinning really fast maybe it's like a charge pump so it slings the fuel to the outside okay and it, it comes up in this little ramp and that feeds the main pressure pump and i I've never seen a pump designed this way. To me, I, I would call it a Gerota pump, but I don't know if that's technically technically correct or not. But it reminds me of a Gerota pump, the way it's because you can see how it kind of runs offset. You see how you how you got your opening here, so I imagine it would run probably ran counterclockwise. This little magnetic screwdriver is giving me fits. So get an ideal as that thing is spinning really fast. You know, those those little uh, rollers sling out to the outside and it's a, a very tight machine fit so as it slings out this charge pump is throwing fuel up so you, you can see I got this little bit of an opening the charge pump grabs it so as it's coming around the corner you see we got an opening right here so you got fuel in this little area okay and as it continues to rotate it starts to compress you see this air is getting tighter and tighter. It, let me get my fingers out of the way. As it comes around, it keeps getting tighter and tighter and squeezes and squeezes. And once it finally gets way over here, the fuel has nowhere else to go except to be forced up this slot right here. Because you've got a slot on the bottom side that's being fed from the lower pump and a slot at the top side that's now being pressurized. And then once it gets pressurized, what's cool about this, it actually flows right through the motor. Because see how this is laid out. I can get it halfway back to you and get this out of the way. The way it's assembled, it's kind of like this. Get the components lined up. That sits here like that. You got your impeller. It goes in here. You got your armature spinning. But see, this, this case is was compressed tight around there I had to grind it apart so you know the fuel don't flow around the outside the fuel is flowing up through the magnets around the armature across the brushes all that fuel is flowing right past it when you get to the top here whoops you got a little check valve 
It's a little check valve there. Well, it's only, it's only this is the check valve that that's, don't do anything. So there's a little check valve here. That then then once it leaves this port, then it's on its way up to the engine from that point on. Well, it actually goes up. There's a, re a regulator at the engine first. But anyway, that's kind of how it works, and I thought it was kind of interesting. And I just wondered what fuel pumps are made like today if they're built this well. You know, I just replaced this with a Delphi. I wonder if it'll run 36 years. I kind of doubt it. I hope it would. But I wonder what if the technology has changed, if it's made this well. You know, stainless steel. Very nice machining. I thought that was cool. I hope you thought so too. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.